What's up, what's up, you guys? This is just truly it was Chassie Warmington, aka all that chess, aka Lupus Slayer. Not understanding why my voice is sounding like this right now. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. It's weird, but uh I want to talk to y'all today about a young lady that I read about. Um, her name is Natasha Bronson. And um, I'm just, I'm not going to get into too much excruciating or extreme details about it. But I do want to talk about the psychological and the mental and emotional abuse that people fail to realize that she endured and there's no definitive way for a person to respond to trauma, to respond to hurt. It's not something that's etched in stone. We cannot toy with people's emotions and feelings. We don't know what a person has been through already, or some people do. So if you already know someone has already been through something very similar or have been heartbroken really bad, um... And you turn around and you do the same thing to them. It may not end up too well for you or for that person and or any children that's involved. And unfortunately, um, with this young lady, she lashed out at on herself and she lashed out on her children. And thanks to anybody and everybody who's watching, just please be mindful that a lot of times I cannot see comments or see who's viewing most times sometimes i can but most times we can't so i'm not trying to ignore anybody so if i overlook you if i do not respond to your comment or acknowledge you i promise you it's not intentional so please just forgive me in advance and overlook that but um this young lady she attempted to kill herself she attempted a murder suicide by trying to kill herself and her five children um, when she discovered that her boyfriend is a married man and I'm going to just I'm, I'm going to be very optimistic about this but at the same time I'm going to be very objective you know because oftentimes we as women and this is not something that and I'm assuming this is something that I have seen over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again and me personally have been guilty of it myself in the past where we just take a man's word. We just take him at face value. If he say he's single, we believe it. If he, we, if he say he's divorced, we believe it. We don't necessarily always ask for proof. And some men are so narcissistic and so manipulative um, because their intentions are not good and sincere, that they will actually try to make you feel guilty for asking for that kind of information to, you know, show proof, you know, but they expect you to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they expect for you to show them anything, any kind of proof that they desire, they need, they want from you. <clears throat> Excuse me. They will expect you to do it. But when you ask them, Oh, you don't trust me. Oh, you don't love me. Oh, see, we can't be in a relationship. There's no trust. I told you, girl. And now you now you trying to um throw it in my face and stuff. Or you you acting like, you know, like I'm gonna lie to you, like I'm trying to hurt you or something. Like they'll try, they'll throw that. I mean, stop just scholar Oscar Award winning actors. And I have been through that as well. And I know it goes both ways, but I'm talking about female this time so please guys i don't need a lot of overly sensitive guys messaging me am i dming me or putting comments well females do it too well females did look obviously you must be one of those guys who are guilty of doing that or have done that or knows or have a homeboy or family member or somebody you close to that does that or you could donate because if not you wouldn't take it so personal and be so sensitive, you know, about it, you know, so just chill. <laughs> but <clears throat> Aisha, I mean, um, Atasha, Atasha um, Bronson, she mur she tried to kill herself and her five children. Hi, Gail. 
Hey, gorgeous. I'm going to have to come over there and see you. That will be a good trip. I need to get away. I need to get out of America. So I come overseas to see you. <laughs> and so, um, but she was so devastated and she was so scarred that she actually attempted to murder herself and kill her children. So this says, this speaks volume. Like she got in her vehicle. She was driving down the highway in her vehicle. And she was, had her children. This was, she did this on Facebook Live too. Okay. So by the way, she did this on Facebook Live. This just happened last month. Hey Doug, how are you feeling dear? Thanks for watching. And the fact that this lady would do this on Facebook Live is a cry of someone who is, extremely emotionally and mentally distressed and i hate to say this in the melanin communities and melanin families oftentimes oftentimes we are so quick to overlook our loved ones and our friends who are battling psychologically who are battling mental illnesses who are battling emotionally because we are taught i know for me grow up you know life you know like on the throw you lemons make lemonade, you know, and you know, we are taught things like that, but we're never taught to deal with our psychological, um, um, weaknesses or to deal with trauma, to deal with emotional hurts. Like we're not given any really, any type of structure or any type of example of how to constructively deal with heartbreak, to deal with trauma, to deal with you know, disastrous situation, deal with heart, um, you know, heartbreak. We're not taught how to, you know, we're just taught to move on. That's life. It happens. You ain't the only one. So continue to move on, but you can't just that, you know why people do that? Because they don't know what to do themselves. So for them, oh, just move it along. You'll be all right. You ain't the first female that got their heart broken. You ain't going to be the last. And all of that may be true, but we're not talking about other people. I'm talking about right now. This situation this person is dealing with right now and the state of mind that that individual is in because they have experienced this trauma, because they have experienced this heartbreak, because they have experienced this, <clears throat> excuse me, this, um, this trauma, this devastation in their lives. You cannot toy with people's emotion. And I really hate when people be like, oh, be strong minded, be strong minded. Our minds are not a damn machine. Even, even Teflon. Teflon is hard and it's tough, but give it enough heat, it can, it can, it can dissolve too. So give it enough pressure. Some things, our mind can only take so much pressure. Our psyche, our, our, our psychological state, our emotional state can only take so much psyche. I mean, so much pressure. I don't care how much you pray, how much you fast. And all of these stuff, you know, that's why you got a lot of people that's walking around here. They got the biggest smile on their face and they try to act like everything is all cool. But they have so much inner anger and rage in them that anything can set them off at any given moment. And they just see like they always people like they a lot of times people just hold in so much stuff because they have been taught to do that. Or they, <clears throat> excuse me, feel like that's something that they have to do or they've, um, that's how they grown up and they never had anybody to show them or teach them any constructive ways or any other way to cope, <clears throat> excuse me, any other coping skills or, um, or options. So they just suck it up. But I'm going to tell you one day, if the, the right person, the right situation comes, that person explodes. That's why you have people who has never even had as much as a traffic ticket. They never even got rolled up in school ever. All of a sudden they don't snap. Now they don't become mass murderers. They going around here. They killing their spouse. They killing their children. They killing people. Why? Because they have dealt with so much stuff psychologically and they wanted to be strong because they were told to be strong or be strong minded, you know, because we're told and I, and I know we've all heard this. Oh, well, you know, it's mind over matter. And if you give in, then that means you're weak. No, it means you're human. And every human being has their level. They have their limit. Some of us can handle some of the most, whew, the absolute disastrous and traumatizing things. And 
can actually still function, you know, constructively and then not really have an effect on them psychologically to the point where, you know, it'll mess with their psyche or mess with their livelihood, mess with their emotions. But some people, they can't. And that doesn't mean that that person is weak. It just means that that's what nature has given to them. Remember, we didn't create ourselves, okay? We didn't create our own minds. You know, even though people say, oh, well, you can control your own mind and stuff like that. You can to a degree, but when you get to a point where you snap, that's why they call it insanity, temporary insanity. You can snap. A person can go to that level without even expecting to do it. They don't premeditate it. It just happened. That's why it's called instant, you know, temporary insanity, because it's something that just happened as a result of a situation or, or something traumatizing or disastrous or negative that it, they experience, and it just sends them over the edge. And they did. They and I'm gonna tell you something. A lot of people who snap like that, they don't even know that they're at that point. You know, I like for me, I I, you know, I feel when I feel like I'm gonna be at a breaking point, I get on Facebook and I vent. You know, I don't have no. Um, I don't have nothing to hide. I'm not trying to act like I'm the strongest female in the world. And even with all the stuff that I've been through, and that's the thing people be like, oh, as much you've been through, you should be easier for you. No, it doesn't get easier. Like, that's the most ignorant shit ever. Like, who's, like, who is talking to you and where are you getting these theories and ideas from? No, it doesn't get easier. It's because you've gone through it so many times. You know, it's just like somebody being custody raped, children being custody raped. By their parents. That mess don't get easier, get abused and stuff. They may become immune to it, but it doesn't get easier up here. Psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. It don't, no, it does not get easier. Okay? But throughout the years, I have learned different coping skills, different ways to cope and manage and to deal with, you know, hurt, to deal with disappointments, to deal with tragedy, tragedies. To deal with things like that. You know, I've learned different coping mechanisms. And when I feel like I'm just going to completely lose it. Like I feel like I'm, I want to. Because we get to that point sometimes. We just feel like we want to kill somebody. <laughs> or probably try to or kill yourself. Sometimes we get to that point. Not everybody, but a lot of people do. Even though they don't confess it. Because they don't want you looking at them like. Oh, you talking about killing yourself? Well, I knew something was a little wrong with you. They don't want to be looked at look down on because society frown on people like that and started trying to help and and find a solution to help them because mental illness is real so they they are being denied about it but sometimes you get to that point and i know for me i may have had several several <laughs> numerous times and points in my life where i just felt like i was going to snap like 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 i could take when I say nothing else, nothing else negative, nothing else. I got to, I, I've been to, as they call that breaking point. I mean, I've been there and I have snapped. I have broken stuff up. I go back to the Dollar Tree. I buy stuff to replace what I broke. <laughs> you know, fortunately, I never broke any um, big ticketed items. But boy, I would hum a glass to the wall in a heartbeat. <laughs> You know, I have gotten to that point at some times in, in, in places in my life where I just, just completely just turned my bed over, threw pillows. Because <laughs> you get too full, you get tired. Especially when it's something that you cannot control and, it's a, and you're forced to deal with that situation. You're forced to deal with whatever trauma it is that you're experiencing or whatever um, devastation or situation that is that, that, excuse me, it's causing you so much pressure psychologically, mentally, and emotionally, and spiritually, and you're forced to deal with it. And you don't have an outlet like my health. When I first started battling lupus and visovagal syncope, rheumatoid arthritis, retinal disease, chronic asthma, I mean, let's go on and on. When I started battling these chronic diseases and illnesses, I didn't know how to take it because I did not know that it was going to be something that I was going to be battling with for pretty much a lifetime. So especially when it was messing with my when it messes with my cognitive, 
where I can't remember uh, words, can't remember people's faces, can't remember how to spell things. You know, um, there's been times I got in my car and I drove and I, I was headed to the store and I forgot that I was headed to the store and I ended up like 30 to 40 miles away from where I was actually supposed to be going in the first place. Like when I started experiencing that, I did not know how to process that psychologically. I didn't know how to cope with that. So I was venting. I was just woo, eradicating. Okay. Like seriously, just because it was so much for me to deal with because I did not understand what I was up against, I didn't understand that these diseases and conditions would cause me to have these kind of issues. I didn't realize it was going to affect my mobility uh, a lot at times and stuff and my ability to be able to grab things, hold things. Um, it was just a whole lot that I was struggling with. So psychologically, I was being, I was going through it. I was, tra I was traumatized and I was going through situations, um, issues with my relationship and stuff and so it was just like trauma on top of trauma and i did not know we don't know what our breaking point is and i remember i just zoned out one day and i didn't, i don't even remember that day my mom my son remember i don't even remember it but that's what i'm saying like we don't know what our limits are so we a person intentionally hurt someone with someone intentionally toys with someone's emotions when someone intentionally lies and deceive people or a person to take advantage of them, to get what they want out of them. Hi, Ronaldo. Thanks for watching. It could cause, it, you don't know what kind of effect it could cause that person. And the fact that this young lady already have five children, she's a young lady. That's the thing. I think she's under 30 and she already have five children. First and foremost, if you're with a female and she has that many children and she's that young, Obviously, there's some kind of emotional issue or mental issue going on with her internally where maybe she feels, um, for instance, uh, sometimes when people go through trauma, they have, they, they, they uh, reach out. Some people reach out to drugs. Some people reach out to alcoholism. Some people reach out to promiscu promiscuity. So maybe that was her thing. I don't know. I don't, because I didn't see... Or read about if all of her children had the same dad or different dads or whatever. But the fact that this young lady is under 30, under 30 years of age, and she already have five children, that's already a red flag that something emotionally is going on with her. Especially if she was not married to the person or with the person for the, 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 the father of the children for a long time. Or if she has more than two baby daddies. That's something that's letting you know something is really, there's a void in her that is missing. And so she might be very obsessive. <laughs> you know, she might be capable of snapping like that in the event you, you know, break her heart and she find out that, you know, you're cheating on her and stuff like that. So, you know, she might snap like that. That's, you know, people, that's why I do not talk with people, My especially these days, this just happened last month on the 27th i believe of of june this happened where this young lady get it got into her vehicle and drove on the highway with her children in the car on facebook live said that she's going to kill herself said that that was going to be it you know that that we're not going to hear from her see her anymore or the children because she discovered that her boyfriend was actually married and so I, I have to back kind of like pound it back a little bit when I talk about responsibility as us as women. A lot of times we are just so emotionally, we, we're such emotional creatures by nature. We're just naturally like that because we carry life in us. So we're naturally nurturing, or well, most of us are, <laughs> you know, and, and, and caring. And so with that, we're automatically just going to be naturally emotional emotionally uh, attach, get attached to people, you know, emotionally, especially when we really feel that we love and care about them. And that high infatuation, infatuation feels like love. It imitates love to the T, but it's not love. It's infatuation. I had to learn that too. I had, you know, I, I've had a lot of infatuation with guys and I thought I was in love with them, but it wasn't nothing to do with love. It was all infatuation. So 
she the fact that she, you know that this chick has five children i don't know i know um and the reason why i use myself as an example because i it's just when i a lot of times when i do stories like this it actually reminds me of a lot of stuff that i actually have personally experienced myself so i can relate now i can't relate to <coughs> excuse me you know trying to kill myself over a man and stuff that I found out, you know, he was actually married or actually in another relationship. And I never did no miss like that. Side now, everybody. Go on. Go on about your business. Go on about your life. Yeah, I might have to cry or whatever. But I'd be damned if I'm going to kill myself over somebody who wouldn't be deceitful like that and, and treat me and, and, and what I'm going to do, kill myself and hurt myself over you. Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. No, baby, we ain't doing that. But maybe that was her way of Maybe she experienced some kind of trauma in her life and that was her way of coping with what she was doing. And some people, they just feel the need to be loved or wanting someone to love so much that they just, you know, um, I actually have that to happen to a, a, a dear family member where um, a person that she was extremely close to i mean like her this family member two peas in the pod extremely close to him. when that person died it shattered her like it literally shattered her emotionally and it's like after that she got into a ended up finding herself in a dysfunctional relationship and she was just having babies after babies because she was so used to nurturing because the family member that died, you know, she used to care for this person, used to feed this person, you know, crush up the medications for the person and everything. And so when an individual died, when this family member died, it just, you know, it had an effect on her that nobody, we knew, of course, it would have a devastating effect on her, but we didn't know that she was going to respond. That's what I'm saying. We can't predict. We didn't know that that would cause her to respond the way that she did. And so, you know, she was having babies because she was used to taking care of this family member. And she was used to doing, providing for this family member. She was used to caring for this family member. So to try to replace that void in her life, she started having children because you care for children. You know, you provide for the children, you know, you nurture the children. And that's what she still, she's a phenomenal mom, like a superb mom, but it devastated her to the point that that's, that's how she responded and coped with the loss of this family member that, you know, she was so extremely close to. So we never know how a person is going to respond to something. And, and it's, and you know, nowadays, I don't know if you all really, I don't really watch news per se, but I do watch a lot of YouTube. And I will say that it's like more and more women now are getting fed up <laughs> of being the, the victim. And they're starting to retaliate in um, fatal ways. You know, they're killing the men. They're killing whoever... He's cheating on her with or left her for, you know, okay, well, I know you love the children since this is what you love and this is how I'm going to be able to get you back because it'll hurt you. And they don't even care that they will go to prison and jail for life. They don't even care about that. It's like whatever because most of them feel like once you're, once they have lost a particular person that their life is over anyway. They feel like that, you know, especially someone who's been in a relationship or marriage with someone for a long time for 10 plus years. That's a lot of time to invest in someone, you know me saying? You have somebody who has invested a decade or more in a relationship or a marriage for it to fall apart because one the other person is out there cheating because of the infidelity and being abusive and stuff. That is a hard pill to psychologically swallow. You know, and, you know, it, it affects guys, too, because, you know, you got guys who go around killing females because she don't want to be with him anymore. Like he she don't want to take his abuse anymore. She don't want to take his infidelity. 
And because he's so narcissistic and she wants to, she's trying to do the right thing of leaving the situation so things won't get crazy. He don't want to let her go. So then he starts chasing after her. He'll try to kill her boyfriend or do kill her new man or husband, boo, whatever, and try to kill her too. And some of them turn around and kill themselves also. So I'm just saying that that just goes to show you that you cannot toy with people's emotions and feelings because you don't know when a person is going to be at their breaking point. You don't know what would make what action would cause them to just snap to the point where they would where it's like to, to the point of no return you don't know that so why would you gamble your own life in safety and then the safety and life of others you know the person who you cheating on the, on your significant other spouse with you endangering their life especially if they have children you endangering not just their life but now even the children life because you don't know where that person's state of mind is that you just betrayed so don't toy with people's feelings. And, and, and I would say it like this. If you feel like the relationship is not working and you're finding yourself unhappy, and believe me, I don't care. You can be with somebody two years, three years, less than that or more. You're going to always see somebody that seems to be more seductive, more attractive, more charming, more sexy. That's a part of life. But just because you see it don't mean that you have to touch it, taste it, embark on it, you know? That's where it comes, self-control. And a lot of people don't want to have self-control because, oh, I'm free. <laughs> I'm in free. <laughs> freedom. Hey, anybody tell me what to do? I'm free. Yeah, but that freedom is going to cost you if you, go, if you go out there and you keep doing trifling stuff because you're going to do it to the wrong person. And it's not going to end up well for you and or your family member. Um, this young lady, this lady, um, her, this guy, and, and I'm going to use this one. Hey, Aformo, how are you? Thanks for watching. This lady, um, I'm going to put the links. I'm going to find these stories because I, I have them in my history on faith. I mean, on, um. YouTube, but I'm going to put the links in the in the description above the video. She left this abusive guy. She she left this guy who was cheating on her. Excuse me, and she moved on with her life. Hi, Junior. He told her. He gave he he told her he was honest. He said, "Look, if you ever try to leave me," he said, "I'm going to do something to you." That you're not going to be able to shake off. And you'll never. And, and it's going to be a constant reminder. And he threatened. To set her family. He told her. I'm going to set your family on fire. He said I'm going to kill them. If you don't come back to me. And of course. When someone say something that crazy to you. Melanin people are so bad about doing this. And I want to say melanin people. So let me not say that. People, period, because I know a lot of white people, Hispanic people, Asian people that have done the same thing. When someone says something crazy like that to you, you need to call the damn cops and report it. So she just feeling like, oh, he just really angry, really bitter. He's not going to actually do it. He told her that he was going to kill her family. What he did, he called. To see if she was there. He didn't want her to be there. Because he didn't want her to die. He wanted to make her suffer. And the way to make her suffer. He know how close she is to her mom. To her sister. Her nephew. So those are the people that he wanted to kill. He wanted to kill the ones that were close to her. The closest to her. And he did it. He burnt them down. He put a cellar around the house. Around the windows. Around the doorways. Any way that they could possibly escape. He put his cellar in there and set the house ablaze and actually killed her mother because her mother, her sister, and her nephew were in the house. And he killed them like he told her that he would do it. He did it, I think, like a day or two days after he had told her that he was going to do it. But what we do a lot of times, we think people are not going to act out in those kind of manners. 
we always underestimating people. And I'm telling you, we as human beings are the most unpredictable creations and creatures in the world. We can do some of the most craziest things and we can do it spontaneously without any warning or even with warning. We have this tendency to not believe that people would do something that heinous and that crazy, especially someone who you've been with for a long time and you finally have had enough of their ish and you decide you want to leave them. The last thing you would expect for that person to do is try to kill you. I mean, you more than likely, of course, you know, you may go back and forth arguing with each other, you know, throwing shots at each other, you know, and stop insults or whatever. That's expected, but you would never expect for a person to come and try to kill you or kill you and or your family members and people that's close to you. You would never expect that, but that's why we cannot underestimate people. And too often time we underestimate people. Hi, my Melissa. How are you, sis? Happy 19th anniversary to you and Tony, my brother. But yeah, so, you know, you, you, we have this tendency to underestimate people because we cannot psychologically fathom or imagine that a person would go to that extent and snap. Well, this guy who decided that he wanted to play games and toy with Atisha Bronson's emotions and mind and feeling, I'm quite sure he never expected that she would get in her car with her children, go on Facebook Live, and drive down the highway at over 70, 80 miles an hour and say that she's going to, that she's getting ready to kill herself and the children that we're not going to see from them, see them or hear from them anymore. I'm quite sure he was never expecting that when he decided to lie to her and deceive her to get what he wanted from her. And you think about it, um, and another thing I don't like with some of these stories, they don't actually say how long they were together. My assumption is they must have been together a couple of years or something. They had to have been together for a year or more for her to be snapping like that. If not, then she really definitely have a mental illness that has been overlooked for years. And family, like I was saying earlier, we as melanin people, especially, we don't take mental illnesses serious. We see our family member going through stuff or whatever. You know, we just be like, oh, girl, suck it up. Oh, man, you know, oh, man, that, you know, you being weak, you being a little punk and stuff. And the people, they're really hurting inside and they just be so embarrassed to even reach out for help, you know, because they realize they're not going to get it because they don't have their family members, their friends don't know how to help them. They don't know any coping skills. I know growing up, I was not taught any coping skills. I didn't even know what coping skills were until I became an adult. Like, like in my in my late twenties, I didn't know what the hell coping skills were. I, I was never taught that. You know. So she in a she's a young lady. She lives in Mississippi. But she survived the crash. Her children survived the crash. She was put in and taken into the hospital. And I'm quite sure there was charges, you know, child endangerment charges and stuff brought up against her. She apologized. As I think once she got into that, once she actually wrecked her car and her car flipped all upside down and stuff and slid down the road, I think. A moment, I think at that moment, reality set in like, what the hell am I doing? And sometimes, you know, it takes that. Sometimes people don't get reality. It's just like someone who say, I want to kill myself. And they decide to jump off that bridge. Once they make that jump though, and they only way they know, there's no, there's no return. For Atisha, it was return. You know, she was spared. The universe spared her. And so I believe a moment of clarity finally came in. She finally snapped back to reality and realized what the hell was I doing over a man who lied to me and deceived me. Hey, Sean, how are you? Oh, um, the week, not next week, because it's my son's birthday. 
but the week after that I'm gonna um, make a deposit for you so that I can go ahead and make sure I have you booked so when we do get this event popping off and stuff you already have your money so I will make sure I do that okay <laughs> so I thought it in a while I remember but uh but in, um but she you know she had a moment of clarity and I'm going to say this to women and I say this from my own experience I'm sorry guys I'm watching the time I'm trying not to go over an hour women do your do your due diligence okay I don't care what he say I don't care what kind of lines he give you what kind of smooth lines and you know this guys you can take this too because you know you got some a lot of trifling females these days you know these females some of them are becoming worse than some of these guys and you know I guess it's kind of like the tables turning or whatever as they say I don't know what it is but I, I what I explain to people is that um, okay Sean thank you but what I keep trying to explain to people is when women constantly see women in their family being hurt being heartbroken being treated like dogs by guys and stuff when they grow up and i'm talking about little girls when they grow up some of them grow up and won't have respect for men and they will cheat on men they will set them up to try to have them hurt and harm and robbed and all of this stuff they won't have no respect for men so it's like they constantly see this cycle and it's not just in their family that they're seeing this. They're seeing this in their friends' family. They send it in the neighbor's household. They send, this, this, you know, they send the all these multiple men just just be cheating on women and treating them like crap and disrespecting them. That makes a lot of women not want to trust men, you know. And it's you know it has become a more common thing now where women are more willing now to cheat on men and not believe anything that they say because they have constantly they grew up seeing a pattern of different men different families different situations but it's always be unfortunately the same thing when a man is cheating so i would say this because i was in my relationship my previous relationship for five years five consecutive years well we split up for about a year and then we got back together so I would just say four, four years. Um, and this person just decided they want, you know, they wanted to go out and he, you know, he wanted to go out and he wanted to test other waters. Um, I guess he got tired of the fact that I was too sick to go and work conventional jobs or whatever, because he would you know, constantly compare me to his mistresses, which is really stupid. Like, and that was, you know, so what I'm saying is I've been through some stuff. Where I could have snapped and could have killed his ass, you know, had my psyche not been strong enough to 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 cope with it, had me not have already experienced things and learned how to cope with certain things. So psychologically, that is, and emotionally, because stuff like that, you know, that's asking, you know, that's that's striking that match. That's like, okay, you already pulled accelerant on this situation. Now you want to strike a match and light it up too? Go right on ahead because what happens, happens. You, you strike that match and set that fire. And you can't control what happens after that because that fire is just going to spread wild. And that's how people do you when they mess with your emotions like that. They they strike that and they don't pull accelerant on you for already betraying you and dogging you. But then they want to strike a match to throw it in your face and compare you to their mistresses or the person that they're cheating on you with and stuff. Yeah, so what I'm saying is sometimes, but I will say at the beginning that I do see a lot. Hey, bruh, what's up, James? Big J, what one, man? But they don't, um, women, you all do not, I kill his ass. I drag him by his balls, tie his balls up to the back of the muffler of the truck, a big, high rig truck to them big wheel trucks and drag his ass down the highway <laughs> now i'm just joking ain't fair let no man take me cause me to go to jail hell no bump that damn it ain't worth it bump that i move on he move on i move on too that's the thing 
hell, we can move on too. Like, damn, like you know, just because you can get new pussy, poom poom, make it get new cocky cocky. You know, shit. You ain't the only one that know how to get new stuff. You, you get you a new girl. I can give me a new dude. Like, psh, whatever. Bye. In here. <laughs> but uh, it's um. Uh, damn, what well, I forgot. Oh, women. You got to do your due diligence. I start just trusting. Be with my ex. Before we even were intimate, we weren't even intimate till like almost a year of being together. And before we were intimate. I had to see a reason. I was like, no, you need to go to the doctor, get STD checks, including AIDS, HIV, which for men, it takes longer. So for the results, for the results to come back, because STDs can lay dormant in men longer than they lay dormant in women. So we had to wait. I wasn't going to do nothing until I got results, first and foremost, okay? You tell me you're divorced. Where's the divorce papers? Oh, I don't see no divorce papers. Where are the divorce papers? Okay, to find out he wasn't even divorced. See, that was the first red flag I should have read when I found out that his ass lied to me about being divorced. I should have read and I should have read for the heels. But because she wasn't living with him and I was there, that I moved, pretty much moved in, I would say, because I was always there. You know, I was like, okay, nothing to it. But, um, Women, do you do diligence? We too damn trusting. And guys, y'all do y'all do diligence too. Like I have my I have my son, my son, his birthday next week. But ever since that child been in my womb, I've been talking to him like he a grown ass man. Don't be trusting these little hussies, these special deeds this. Females are not always females born. Then you got females that will try to set you up, try to do crazy stuff because, you know, some dude that they used to mess with or, or you know, the, they brother or they uncle, cousin, whoever, see that, see what he's wearing, you know, may like what my son is wearing, like the way he dressed, like his style and stuff, and want to decide, oh, we'll use her as bait to set him up and so we can rob him and stuff. And usually if they rob you, they're going to end up killing you because you can identify them. So, you know, you guys, y'all have to be careful too because, you know, you got females doing this kind of trifling stuff out there. So I talked to my son, you know, the same way that I'm saying this about women, I say it to my son, you know, I talk to my, I mean, I'm saying this about men, I say this to my son about women. I sure do. He'll tell you. That's why he... I only met one female in my son in, in my son's entire life. That was in high school, uh, junior high. My son has never brought no female around me because he knows how I am. <laughs> and he's not like that anyway. You know, yeah, he likes females, but he's no hoe. And I'm so grateful to that. He chooses not to be a hoe. And because he don't want, he see how I hurt when I went through my situation with my ex. He don't want to afflict that kind of pain on no woman. You know, he don't want to do that to no other woman. So he make a choice that he don't want to be a hoe. So I'm proud of him for that, you know. But women, be patient. Because I'm going to tell you about a guy. If a guy really wants to be with you, he's not going to get upset and, and try to use, try to um, manipulate you um, and make you feel bad and guilty for wanting to pace yourself in a relationship versus jumping into the relationship because you really don't even get to, you don't even really know this person. I don't care if you met family friends, you know, family friends will lie and cover for their loved ones. We already know that shit. They'll sit up their life till they are no good and where they, their family members are rapists, is convicted rapists or pedophile or whatever. They won't say nothing to you about it. You will have to find out your own. You know, some way on your own. They won't even tell you. And then when you ask them why they tell you, they'd be like, well, it wasn't my place to say that. But it's your place to always want to jump into our life, though, and give us advice and stuff and want to tell us how to raise our children. You know, you always got so much to say about all of that stuff, about the way I dress or the way he dress or the, this, that. You got so much to say about every damn thing else. But you couldn't tell me that he or she was a pedophile, rapist, convicted rapist, murderer, or whatever. You, you don't tell me none of that stuff, right? Okay, whatever. But be patient. 
And if he really is interested in you and he really believed that you already won and he believed that you, you know, that you're good for him and he really truthfully want to be with you and you only, he will be willing to build a friendship with you. Because I'm going to tell you something, which I have learned. <laughs> Just because you get along, that means you should lay alone. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes it's good for you and that guy to just be friends. And not no friends what they say with benefits or whatever. Hell, if you're a friend of mine, you're going to have benefits because I'm loyal. I'm faithful. I'm trustworthy. You know, I have your back. I've beat somebody ass if they mess with you. So those are the benefits you get. You ain't, I don't have to give up the poom poom for me to be your friend. And I don't care, male or female. I would, I, I would stand there. I'm a ride or die chick. As long as you don't cross me, because once you cross me, that's it. You get a one strike, that's it. Because I'm not going to give you a reason to get one strike. If I'm not sure that something may betray you or do you wrong, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to just be like, well, I'll just go ahead and do it anyway. Hell no. I would ask, if I do this or if I say that, how would this affect our relationship, our friendship? That's just me. But everybody, different strokes, different folks. Everybody don't do it like that. But... He'll, he'll wait for you. And let me tell you how I know he'll wait for you. Um, still to date, there's this young man. Spent three years. He's been chasing me for three years. I was in a relationship when we met uh, um, initially. And it was never to meet, like to date. You know, when you're out and about or even when you're on social media, you can't help who try to hit on you and stuff like that, flirt with you and all that. You can't control that. But, um, and then some people, you know, they're, they're just act like they want to just follow you because of your business or for business ventures, but then try to turn it into something personal. That's why I have in my, uh, under my profile picture, I'm not interested in dating business only because I'm not. Not interested. They, I'm not even in a psychological mind state to even be trying to date nobody and, and go through all of that stuff. I don't want to be bothered with none of that at this point in my life at all. I just got out of a five-year relationship. The last thing I need is to be trying to jump into the bed with some other man or some relationship. I have discipline. It's been about a year now since me and my ex been broken up. But, you know, so for me... I'm good. I, I can stay. I stay celibate five consecutive years. Like literally. Ain't no ca caressing, no holding hands, ain't no kissing, no hugging, no squeezing, no foreplay. None of that. No. And I did that for five consecutive years on quite a few occasions because I don't have to. For me, I don't. I've learned that how to value my body and that I don't have to just give myself away because a man wanted. I don't have to give myself to him because he wanted. And if he get up get upset with me about that, then I didn't need to be he did he didn't need to be in my life anyway. So there you go. Anyway. But he'll he'll wait for you. And he'll he'll still pursue you. He'll still show you that he's interested. Even if he might date other females or be with other females in between, he'll still be loyal. He'll be there for you if he really feels that. You're there and he'll want to build a friendship with you because not all relationships, not everybody should be in a relationship. Some relationships need to stay as friendships and that's it. It should never cross those boundaries because once it crossed that boundary, then what could have been a great friendship is not going to even be um, a friendship. Like you're not going to even be half, you're not going to even have this person in your life at all at, you know, anymore. So sometimes we have to learn to, be disciplined and have self-control and not act like out of control children in a candy store just seeing all this candy all this sweet all these cookies and just going mad crazy about it you know we don't have to act like that as adults so get to know the guys good not just them. Get to know how their family is. That's another thing, too. You got to know how people's family are. And I learned that, too, because I dated guys who had very psychologically challenged, I mean, like crazy, psycho-schizophrenic family members in, in, in their family, like siblings and, and parents who 
But you just sitting there watching television and they'll just come throwing stuff at people, chasing people with butcher knives. And yes, I may have been, I'm telling you, I may have been through stuff like that. I've seen it where um, I've been in a situation where I was dating this guy and I knew something. I kind of, I, I saw this, I don't know what it was like. As soon as I got in his neighborhood, I just felt so uneasy. I was like, oh my gosh. And then I was trying to turn around and leave. But this time I didn't have a car. This was like a while ago. It was like a long time ago. I was like in my 20s. But I was on the tra on the uh, metro, on the subway. And he had already seen me. He done called my name. He flagged me down. It's like, damn. <laughs> I was literally turned. I had already turned around. I was getting ready to jet out of there because I just got this vibe. Man, went to this dude's house. When I tell you that whole family is crazy, dysfunctional as hell, they really, all of them do need to be caged. Every last one of them need to be caged from the adult to the children. That whole, I never see a whole family full of psycho schizophrenic, bipolar people, straight, delusional, crazy people. Like the mother, she was thinking that was a thought I was her long lost daughter that she never had because she didn't have any girls. She's never had any girls. She kept calling me some girl, some lady named Sherry. She's like, oh, my baby Sherry and stuff. And that when she first said, I, I didn't realize that, you know, she was actually crazy like that, you know. But she kept, she went in her room and she got this dolly, like the clothes for the little baby and stuff. And she had some clothes for little girls. And she's like, oh, she's, she put it up to me. She's like, oh, you should still be the words. This is clothes for little children, for little toddlers that this lady brought out her room. I don't know. Maybe she had a miscarriage and that was her child. And Kate find out that wasn't the case either. When I tell you the family was just straight cuckoo. Looney, the whole damn family, crazy. So you got to get to know people's family and get to know their friends before you get in a relationship with them because also you may have those family members who know that they family member ain't about ish, but you know, they're one of those type, oh, this is my family, ride that for mine, and da, 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 da. And they would actually, you know, take up for their family members and stuff you know they family and was wrong and try to fight you and kill you and your children or whoever else your family and stuff it's just you you know you you can't just jump into relationships in other words you know you have to the women take your damn time i don't care how good looking he is how sexy and fine you may think he is or i believe you mean there's somebody that looks better and that's finer that would treat you right that 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 would love you the way you even more is than what you could have ever expected and imagined and would treat you way better than what you could have possibly ever imagined or wanted. So take your time, ladies, and control your damn fertilities. Hey, he don't want to strap it up. He want a raw dog. And if you the type that want that light for a man to raw dog you, then you need to be taking some kind of contraceptives or something to control your fertility. Because you can't put children on the shelves like they baby dolls. Once they pop out, they are out. <laughs> There's no putting them back on the shelf. It's not putting them back up in the poom poom into the uterus and turning them back into an ovary egg. No, it's not going to work that way. Once once you're pregnant and once that baby develops and you have that baby, that there's no turning back. So control your fertilities. You don't have to let every man that you feel like you love or that say that he love you or show interest in you. You don't have to let him knock you up. Like, come on. You do not have to be knocked up by every man. Um, Whatever. But y'all get the point. But thank you all for watching. Let me know what you all think. Look up the, I'm going to put the link in about this Atisha Bronson. Because there was something already going on with her psychologically before she even attempted, before she even met this man and before she even attempted to, mark, to kill herself and her children in a murder-suicide. 
it was something already deep going on with her and people just overlooked it they paid no mind you know so um just be careful what y'all doing out there how you're treating people because you don't know what people's state of mind is you don't know you don't know big shout out to MK Paradise Cosmetics. That's where I get my lip gloss from. I actually thought I had the tube, but I don't have the tube. I always try to support the tube with it. <laughs> I already got it right quick. Okay, here we go. MK Paradise has the mirror on the side. So ladies, when you're in a nightclub and you want to put some lip gloss on, you get your shine shine on. It also has a light in that you can see. See the light? So you can actually see what you're applying. Your lip gloss. Big shout out to MK Paradise. Thank you for my lip glosses. And I really appreciate all of the supporters out there. All of your all of my Facebook fam. Y'all are my Facebook fam. Y'all more than supporters. Y'all my Facebook fam. I do care about you all individually, even if I've never met you before. I just generally care about people and have a general a, a general love for people. So you all have a great weekend. Take care. Y'all bless for a lot of peace. And thank you again for 